Coach Cal, this is going to want to start with you. Um, obviously, kind of a an interesting time, just you know, with, with Coach Dickert retaking control of the the play calling for a game. What's kind of that been like for you? Kind of getting the calls from Jake, and then kind of you know, obviously taking a lot of the defensive line and the edge work. Oh, it's been you know, getting back with Jake. It's it's, it's been fun. It's like old times when we're back together at Wyoming. So uh, we haven't really missed a beat. Um, I've always enjoyed working with him. I love his preparation. I love his detail and what he does. And, uh, you know, when you have guys like Brennan, uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, Brennan and, and, and RJ, how they how they run a unit and their maturity and their love for the game, it's, it's really easy to uh, watch them go. Is it kind of funny for you? You know, you've known Jake a long time since uh, since back when, you know, he was a youngster and now he's kind of the, the man in charge. You kind of – Maybe remind him sometimes, like, hey, I've, I've been doing this a lot longer than you. I'm kind of the the, the Wiley veteran, just kind of in, in, uh, in fun. Well, you know, I, I think maybe in the past two weeks, I think Jake's aged more than me. So, but no, he's, uh, you know, I don't I never, I never look at it that way. You know, my, my, my job is to glorify and, and honor and bless uh, the man that uh, holds that seat. And that's Coach Dickert. So I'm going to do everything I can to honor him. It's never about age. It's never about wisdom. Um, my, my job is to, uh, Encourage him when he needs encouragement, but then to also follow and lead. For your position group individually at defensive tackle, um, you know, this is the last game for three of your guys, and then it kind of moves into a, a new generation of youngsters. What are you kind of trying to let the, the seniors send themselves off with? And then how are you kind of preparing the new guys, guys like David Gusta, guys like Nusi, kind of for that next year where they're going to be kind of the featured guys uh, for next season? Oh, you know, the younger guys, we had a chance to meet two weeks ago and sit down and, and talk about what that room's going to become and how it's going to continue to germinate the culture, uh, what's going to grow in that room. Um, for Amir and Christian and Pule, I, I can't I can't say enough. Uh, my, my hair is standing up right now because I love those guys and the work that they put in from, from last January to now. And I, I just think about – when I think about them, I think about stability because they had so many changes before I got here. And, and, the, and the trust, the trust that they put into me um, throughout the year – and what they did. So I want I want to make sure I send them out on a, on a great note um, so that their last memory is something really special. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Colton? Brennan, kind of the same thing uh, with Dicker back at defensive coordinator. Uh, you know, how, how's he, how, how smooth the transition, Ben, does it seem like for him going back to his, back to his old post? <laughs> I mean, I, I would say the transition was going over one of those small little row bumps real quick and you're back on the road. I mean, this, this is his defense we're running. Um, you know, we ran it back in 2020, 2021, and, you know, it, it, it's been awesome seeing him get back on, you know, the coaching aspect of coaching a, a defense. Um, he told us the other day in a meeting, he was like riding a bike again. He was just so excited. So he's been bringing that energy to practice, and it's been so fun just seeing him run around and really get into it. So I, I'm super excited for this. Uh, how would you – how would you kind of sum up your your reaction when you first heard the news that 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 Brian Ward and and AJ Cooper were were leaving the program? Um, you know, so since my time in Washington State, you know, there's there's been coaching changes, and I, I kind of understand that's part of the game. Um, you know, you I love having guys here as long as I can, and you know, obviously our coaches are people you're going to get close with, they're people who are going to help you grow and help you mature. But you know, at the end of the day, this is it's, it's football, and sometimes people are going to go. And, um, you know, I just, I'm just thankful for what they've done, and I hope they have an amazing time um, with their great opportunity over there at ASU. And for Coach Caligas, um, just how, how bizarre or, you know, crazy of a mad dash have these past few weeks been for coaches in terms of, of recruiting? And, and you know, were you on the road again yesterday after practice? And, and do you plan to be today as well? Yeah, I just, you know, I happened to spend three hours in traffic trying to get to a home visit last night, so... Uh, yeah, it's a mad dash between game planning and practice and then sitting in the car for three hours and not be able to watch tape. But I uh, got some good podcasts in. But it's, uh, you know, the, I think, the, you know, the last two weeks have been, it has been crazy in, in that aspect. It's really sped up. Um, and then to know that we won't have, we're, we'll be behind one weekend of official visits and, and being able to be on the road. So we're trying to keep my, catch up as much as we can this week. And overall, just in this season, how, how would you – Kind of gauge the the success of defensive line play and 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 overall, would you say it's it's pretty much met your standards? Um, you know, I don't, I think, sir, that's you know, it's a, it's a that's a really good question. I don't know if it'll ever 
it'll ever meet the standards. I think uh, when you when you look at it, it's about each individual becoming their best player and uh, getting every ounce of talent out of that young man. And so, when it comes to that, I'm never the, the, the standard. Um, I don't think it'll ever it'll ever be met in my world um, with what how I want it done and what's how it's going to be done. And but that's my job to get it out. Thank you, Austin. Uh, Brennan, last full practice uh, of the year for you guys. What comes to mind when you you know think back to the spring or the start of fall camp, uh, and and now you fast forward to the last time for a full practice today? I mean, I've just been so impressed with how our team practices together and how we've just completely eliminated that offense versus defense mindset. I mean, practice nowadays is fantastic when it comes to just the terms of competition we have against each other and how much we want each side of the ball to get better. So just, you know, yes, yesterday being like one of our last padded practices, I mean, the energy was just so amazing. It was exuberant, which is how people were flying around, just wanting to compete, but also just the learning aspect of it too, being willing to talk to the guy across the ball from you and helping him get better at the same time. And that's something that we've changed in our culture so much. And, you know, I think it's just paid dividends and, and returns to just how we've gotten better as a unit and as a team. And when you think of the the seniors, the guys that won't be back next year, you know, what do you think? Uh, and you know, not to speak in blanket terms, but what what what's next for them? You know, we think so much about football, but you know, life after football is so important. And and, and you know, what do you expect to see from some of your brothers that are moving on to the next uh, next step in life? I mean, I think we're going to see just so much success. I mean, these are men that are leaving now. When they came to Washington State, they still were young. You know, they're young-minded, but now they've grown so much and matured, and I think they all know what they want to do in their lifetime, and they have a clear set plan. And, you know, I, I wish them nothing but the best, but I know the best is going to come to them because that's how they attack every single day, and that's their mindset. So I think they're going to be super successful in any venture they, they pursue. Thank you. Cook fan. Brennan, did they uh, they have to pull you out of the gym to get you to do this uh, at eight at eight in the morning? Now, I I did go yesterday. I was there around um, right when we got back from um, from Universal. My legs were a little sore, but I had to get it in. Um, they haven't they haven't barred me from that yet, so I'm waiting for that text. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> uh, you know, Coach Dicker just talked a lot about this is a player led team, and and he's emphasized that a lot throughout the year. In a time like this, where you you down some coaches, you got some players in the portal. How much do you think that really does come to the forefront, especially for you as one of the veterans, as one of the leaders, where you're kind of taking charge and saying, all right, we're going to do this. We don't have our coordinator. We're down a coach. But this is, you know, this is our defense. And you're one of the veterans and kind of lead the charge on that. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's it's easy when you have guys that want to be here. You know, that's who you're surrounded by. Um, and so when we're going out to practice every day, we understand the situation. We understand what's going on, what's at stake. But at the same time, it's just 11 guys out there that just love playing football. You know, so we, even with all the external stuff, if you can focus on that internal love for the game, all that other stuff kind of gets washed away. And so that's been the, my biggest message to these guys, just keep playing the game and understand that everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to balance itself out in the end. Just, just continue to trust your fundamentals and trust the people that are still here to coach you because these guys love you. You know, for you for you guys as, a, as an edge unit, I mean, what's kind of the big thing you want to focus on, um, not just through this last few, couple practices, but going into the winter and then going into next season, what's kind of the big the big emphasis for you guys? I'm, the biggest emphasis for, emphasis for us is that the, the, the foundation is already set right here, that we have the foundation, we know what the standard is, and just keeping that and upholding that, maybe even – extending that even further or reach further on the defense. You know, we know how things need to be um, executed out there on the field. And, you know, with our coach or that one for right now, we understand that standard is not going to change. Um, so just going into the you know next year, I want to keep upholding that standard with this unit and getting more guys that, that believe in that standard as well. And I think uh, next year is going to be a great testament to how we, how our group was held together so strong. Thanks, BJ. Morgan. Yeah, so I'd love to know, like, how is um, Bull Week going? I know you guys went to Universal Studios last night. Um, what was that experience like? Me? Go ahead, BJ. Okay. Um, yeah, Universal was super fun. Um, I'm, I've actually gone to the Florida one, so this is a cool change. I haven't been to this one yet. Um, super fun. I mean, I love going to theme parks. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I'm an adrenaline junkie in that regard, so... That was a good time, but I think the, the hospitality here has been fantastic. You know, I'm 
I'm loving being in some warm weather a little bit. Uh, coach could say the same thing. It's nice, nice 60 degrees outside. So that's, that's been really nice. Um, and just being around the guys for five days straight, you know, it, it, I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. Colton. Uh, Coach, ha having gone against both uh, DeBoer and Tedford during your, your time at Wyoming, how would you kind of uh, compare their offensive systems and, 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 do you see similar – how many similarities do you see in the Fresno offense right now compared to the UW offense from a few weeks ago? Um, I see some similarities, uh, there, you know, when it, when it comes to the scheme aspect of it. Um, but I also remember – I remember Hainer from last year, um, what he was able to do. And I remember they came in. They had, they had the number one pass offense also uh, last year when we faced them. And they do a really good job in the run game. Um, Hinder does a really good job of getting the ball out. He's got quick reads. He knows where he's going with it. And so execution wise and, and what they've been doing one and eight straight, um, they know what they want. They know what they want to go after. And then in that championship game and how they fought and how they finished that game up in Boise, and we know how hard it is to win in Boise. So they're doing a really good job right now. Thanks very much. Austin. Uh, Brennan, kind of the difference between this bowl and some of the previous ones that you went to is it's a week earlier, um, and you guys will actually be kind of free for the, for the Christmas week. Is that something you guys have thought about at all that you kind of get the best of both worlds? You get all the fun of bowl week and then you get kind of, uh, you know, holiday with your, your family as well. Yeah. I mean, that, that's huge. You know, um, since I've been in, in college, I, I haven't really been home for Christmas. It made me last year, which was, which is awesome because it's just how things lined up with our schedule. But, you know, having that opportunity to be back and really just to be with my siblings, um, I miss them a ton. And just having that opportunity to go be with them for an extended period of time is, is amazing seeing them grow up. Um, but also the thing in the back of your mind, you're a football player and you want to be playing for as long as possible. And so one of the cool things about bowl preparation is the long, the way, the longer away your game is, the more bull practices you have. And that's huge for young guys' development. So it's kind of a give and take in that regard. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that we're here. Awesome. And, uh, you know, in the spirit of uh, it being the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl, if you had to pick a teammate to be a late night talk show host, who would make a good one and why? Um, I'm just going to go with the, the cop out answer here and put RJ Stone. Um, I'm just going to put that out there because that's like the only one that makes sense right now. But, yeah, I, I don't. I, it pains me to say that because you know he's <laughs> my counterpart. But yeah, maybe you could be his co-host. Thanks, Brennan. <laughs> okay, Mike. Yeah, Brennan with a day in day in uh, Henley out. What are some of the changes to the defensive plan for you guys? Um, I think the defensive plan is pretty much the same thing. You know, it's next man, next man up mentality. We got guys who are ready to go. We got Ben and Kyle who've both had major game experience, and I think they're gonna they're gonna thrive in that. You know, as a challenge comes up, we have guys that are ready to seek that challenge and be uh, have to be have some success. So I'm excited to see what they do. Okay, 